Princess Elizabeth Evelyn Rulfo, <coughs> assistant to the head Archivarius. Um, I've got a document here, and I was instructed to record its contents onto a vinyl record. Uh, there are also a few older recordings, so I'll be playing them too. All right. <clears throat> the document's number, um, serial number, is is uh, E dash zero thirteen. The uh, date of the recording is thirteenth of May, thirteen thirty three. Ballroom Boulevard. Ballroom Boulevard is a slow-acting ergot, characterized by its gradual and pervasive impact on the memories of a whole street in both its permanent residents and external observers, leading to significant memory loss. This culminates in behavioral anomalies among those living on the affected street, characteristic of later stages of amnesia, which results in increased accidents with unintentional injuries, some lethal. Um, initial incident. The ergot begins with the transformation of one of the street signs into an entity with powerful ergotic properties. This transformation has been observed to impact house numbers but may not be limited to them. The most notable characteristic of this sign is its ability to evoke a consistent perception of the phrase Welcome to the Ballroom Boulevard, regardless of its original form or content. Once the sign is in place, the street is deemed infected and the ergot's influence begins to take hold. Uh. Memory loss and behavioral anomalies. Residents of the infected street experience progressive memory loss, which begins with the forgetting of minor details and gradually progresses to the forgetting of more significant personal information. This memory loss highly resembles later stages of amnesia and in most cases leads to accidents, resulting in injuries and even death. Um, the absorption of the street's residence memories by the ergot occurs over an extended period of several months. The following list is a summary of the most common recorded causes of death among the affected residents. It has been compiled from the only report available, see incident E-013-A. It is thus important to note that the following list is not exhaustive and more research is required. 1. Accidental injuries and falls, forgetting about the location of objects within the living space. 2. Starvation, forgetting about the availability or need for food. 3. Exhaustion, forgetting about one's needs such as rest. 4. Lack of care in cases of the elderly residents and little children. Manslaughter, mistaking Five, manslaughter, mistaking family members or friends for hostile strangers. Six, unintentional arson, forgetting about sources of fire such as stoves or cigarettes. There, there's a footnote here. Um, it is notable that arson is one of the least common causes of death. The working theory is that a ballroom boulevard can choose which memories to consume, potentially to hold off the death of its prey. Signed, Dr. Kilka.
Additionally, individuals who do not reside on the street also begin to experience memory loss and confusion regarding the street and its inhabitants. Such individuals struggle to recall the street's name and at later stages its existence in general. <coughs> uh, remediation. As the only known case of it, this ergot's appearance, read incident E-013-A, suggests it seems that the only way to stop the ergot's influence is to destroy the affected street sign. Conclusion Ballroom Boulevard exemplifies the complex interplay between environmental stimuli and cognitive processes, highlighting the potential for slow-acting ergots to disrupt human memory and behavior. Further research is needed to understand the underlying mechanisms of ergotic phenomena and to develop strategies for mitigating their effects. Now, on to the report, the incident E-013-A. On May 1328, residents of Street on level 3 first noticed a street sign affected by the Sergot. The sign has replaced the number plate on an apartment building, house number 34 on Street and displayed, as the eyewitnesses later claimed, the phrase, Welcome to the Ballroom Boulevard. The street sign also displayed ergotic properties, causing headaches in those who viewed it for prolonged periods of time, and generally described as being hard to look at. Over the following months, residents and external observers became increasingly aware of their own memory loss. See interviews E-013-A-1 through E-013-A-5. Um, I am going to um, <coughs> uh, play them right now. Um, <coughs> Interview E-013-A-1. Interviewer, Agent Lucy. Interviewee. <coughs> How's your health these days? Not a bad thing, Inspector. Just a few aches and pains. Nothing I can't handle. That's good to hear. I've got a few questions that I'd like to ask. Can you give me a detailed account of how you received those injuries? Oh, it all started a few weeks ago. I suddenly started tripping over things and falling down. It was like they were just appearing out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure my entire apartment was reworked. Apparently, I even had a coffee table. While I had, I fell on it and broke it. However, did it end up in my bedroom? Can you tell me anything else? Well, the rooms themselves were different too. I wanted to go to the kitchen, but smacked myself in the face by walking into a wall. And one day I couldn't find my bathroom. Then I see a strange door that was never there before. I open it and there it was. The room moved. Yes, it did. I see. Our working theory is that you, alongside with the other residents, might have been exposed to some kind of gas leak that affected your memory. Well, is it being dealt with? Yes. By the time you get back on your legs, everything will be cleared up. <laughs> Interview E-013-82. Interviewer, Agent Mosley. Interview. Ma'am, thank you for coming in. No trouble, dear Inspector. So, have you learned anything about uh, what I asked you to investigate? Yes, well, we've got new information about those animal corpses found around your apartment that you asked us to look into. There were, let's see here, uh, four cats, two dogs, one parrot, two hummingbirds, one lizard, five hamsters. All of them had cages. Cats and dogs had collars. Cages were all incredibly dirty, but had plenty of toys and litter. We found plenty expired pet food, too. We concluded that they were your pets. I'd say. I have no idea what you're talking about, Inspector. I don't have any pets. I've never had any. I couldn't possibly have had such a, enough money to sustain such a menagerie of animals. 
mouth. But the where are your pets, ma'am? We understand that you've been experiencing amnesia along with the rest of the street. You know, because of the yeah, gas yeah. leak. They've told me about that. And as a result, you might have forgotten about your pets. Some of them managed to escape. We found animals with collars with your dress mentioned on them, roaming around not too far away. But a lot of the ones that did remain in your apartment seemed to have died from neglect. Yeah. The cages were too sturdy. That doesn't make any sense, I say. If I had any pets, I would have been taking good care of them. I love animals. But one day, I wake up, and there is this horrible stench. We know you live alone. Have you any family? Mayhap living somewhere else? Oh, well, yes, I do. I have a daughter. She has a whole family, five kids. In fact, I wonder why they haven't come to visit in the past few months. They I see. I see. Again. It's best if you contact them as soon as possible and ask them to help you with clearing out your apartment. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear from you, yeah. and you might need help with carrying out all those cages and animal toys. I say, you know this whole ordeal has been greatly depressing, but I say, those animals were never mine. I truly think it was just a cruel prank, and to find whoever's responsible for this. We will get to the bottom of this, I assure you, ma'am. Interview E-013-A-3, interview Agent <laughs> Mosley, interview E. Are you feeling better? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I am. Can you tell me about what happened, sir? I honestly don't know. I can't remember. You know, I was always just confused about everything. It's like a dream, you know? wake up, then you can't recall what happened there a few seconds later. That's how it was. Constantly. I see. Anything in particular you kept forgetting? You even forget you forgot anything at all. But there was one thing. Food. I kept forgetting to buy food. I swear to progress I've been to that damned food market a dozen times a day. Definitely come back empty-handed, but... I see. We have found piles of expired food in your apartment. We think you bought it all, and then simply forgot it existed. Well, that doesn't make any damn sense, would I've noticed it again if that was... We think that street was exposed to a gas leak. It messes with people's heads in unpredictable ways. The situation is being handled. I almost starved. If it wasn't for my friends, I would have been dead. And you're telling me it's being handled. <laughs> <coughs> That's all I can tell you, I'm afraid. I'll leave you to rest and recover. Have a good day. Interview E-013-A-4. Interviewer Agent Mosley. Interviewee. Ma'am, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Yes. Yes, it's fine. All right. Did your memories return to you? Of your husband and uh, uh, son? Oh, I'm still as sure as ever I was never married and never had a son. I see. So, did you just find an unknown man and infant yes. in your apartment one day? Yes, that's how That's how it happened. This man, he came up to me and said, Darling, there's a child in our bedroom. It's not breathing. What do we do? I saw toys, napkins and infant clothing. But it wasn't I see, child. um... I have an update for you here, ma'am. Your uh, alleged uh, son, Mike, was um, eight months old at the time of his death. Um, autopsy revealed. It wasn't my child. Autopsy revealed. It wasn't death my child. Death by starvation. It wasn't my ma child. Ma'am, please sit down. Please. We already took your husband's testimony. 
He had no idea about any child either. He denied ever having a son. I always wanted a son. A little boy. Now being told that I did have him, and he's dead now. I'm very sorry to mention this, but the child did die because of neglect. The state is going to investigate. But the investigation showed there was a severe gas leak. It affected the entire street. It wasn't your fault. You can prove it, but you'll need a good lawyer. Here is a copy of the technician team's investigation results. Stamped and signed everything. I'll leave you to rest. This is, uh, um, there's another recording. Initially, residents attempted to address the issue by submitting requests to the Department of Housing and Communal Services for the removal of the street sign. However, due to bureaucratic delays, by the time assistance was provided, the memory loss appears to have already become so profound that even the repair crews struggled to locate the street, forgetting about what job they were commissioned to do. Following three weeks of no reply, the residents took matters into their own hands and removed the affected street sign themselves. Once the sign was uh, taken down and destroyed, the influence seems to have ceased, and the street has begun to return to its original state. General statistics. <clears throat> Twenty houses bear the name of the uh, street. All of them are apartment buildings, no more than five floors in height. In total, 718 residents were registered on the street before the incident. Of those 718 residents, 252 were children, 356 were adults, and 110 were elderly. Additionally, of those 718 residents, 652 were humans, 31 were dwarves, 12 were halfling, and 20 were un of unconfirmed heritages. Out of those 718 residents, 347 were confirmed dead. 112 have received major injuries and required hospitalization. 103 have received minor injuries. 124 haven't received any kind of injuries. 32 remain unaccounted for. Out of the 347 confirmed dead, 112 died due to accidental injuries, of which 80 were due to falling downstairs, 19 due to falling off balconies, and 13 due to hitting the furniture within the apartments. 89 died due to starvation and or exhaustion, of which 77 were discovered surrounded by large amounts of expired food. 56 died due to neglect, lack of care, which, of which 32 were children below 2 years of age and 19 were bedridden elderly. 
51 died due to violent trauma, presumed manslaughter incidents, of which 29 had blunt force traumas, 21 had knife wounds, and 1 had gunshot wounds. 39 died due to a fire breakout in the apartment house number 31, presumed to have started because of a forgotten stove, of which 12 had severe burns, and 27 had symptoms of smoke asphyxiation. The rest of the statistics are available in the Appendix A. The document is over. <laughs>